Fisheries Eye is supported by the USAID from the American people. Ghana's fishing communities hide a disturbing secret. Child labor. For generations, children have been forced to work in hazardous conditions, sacrificing their education, health, and childhood. The country's fishing industry has a complex history. Pre-colonial traditions of family-assisted fishing evolved into exploitative child labor Post-colonial economic struggles perpetrated the cycle. Today, poverty drives children into hazardous fishing work. Lack of education, vocational training and social services traps families in a cycle of exploitation. The effects, health risks, limited education and emotional trauma. Here on the second in Russia, London Beach, children toil day and night. But what is accounting to increase child labor in the community? I went digging. The same birds of the same feather flock together best describes the story of these two children. I call them Kwame and Kwesi. Each boy's story sheds light on the issue of child labor in sufficient communities. Kwame, not his real name, is the youngest of three and is viewed as the odd one in his family. Unlike his siblings, he doesn't attend school. His mother reveals why. Yeah, <laughs> Unfortunately, Kwame's parents won't send him back to school, denying him the right to education due to financial struggles. No school is done. I call the Asana Kuskuma Le Miniska. In the exchange of a panala, you know, Kapuna, and also a book of Kusyuma. A given shame and a knockman and a panala went to Monsyuma. Naro Yabotan. There also was Shagman and the Ashana Kakame. No, you are to look at Kayna would do you. Kwame hasn't been to school for a year. He started school late, which made things tough. Kids in his class are usually eight or nine years old. Being 14 in the class of younger kids made Kwame a target for teasing, which hurt his feelings. Years of bullying and teasing has compelled him to hide his emotions. He still has big dreams though. He wants to become a mechanic in future. Yeah. 
kula. Eh, ube kusukua. Eh. For Kwame, fishing is a daunting task which overwhelms him. Eh, uko jimanaeza. Yalukwa. Buwa manda mushumu. Mushumu sa ibibuso. Be anjibe to. Ano sa alibachi. Masani ya to obwa. Nam sos mushe obwa. Kwame's job at sea is too demanding for his age. Harsh weather and rough waves make it harder. He's just a child braving the sea's harsh conditions to survive. What are you his chance to go back to school relies on how much he can save from his fishing job. Child labor and fishing communities is a hidden crisis fueled by illegal and unsustainable practices. Fourteen-year-old Kwesi, like Kwame, has chosen to drop out of school for the past three years. Fifteen, Dad. How many years did you stay Kwesi's reasons for not attending school may seem insignificant, but they stem from a broader issue, a missed educational foundation. Despite his father's attempts, he hasn't returned. I'm a 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 Kwesi prefers fishing for a living over returning to school for minimal financial gain. I had to come under 250 cities to He joins his uncles, experienced fishermen, at Nuresia, London Beach, led by the chief fisherman, who is aware of the illegal nature of their operations. I school, I and books 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 they're not alone. Kwame and Kwesi are two of the numerous children trading education for a life of labor on the London beach. It's a Tuesday morning. While some children are in school, others are here at the London beach. Some are busy weaving nets and playing cards while waiting for work to commence. Mm. 
and the rest are finally arriving from days spent at the sea. As tiring as it may seem, this is the daily life for some children in this community. The big question is, do parents' difficulties justify depriving children of education and exposing them to hazardous fishing conditions? Chief Fisherman Nanakun believes early sea experience prepares young fishermen for adulthood. In most cases, poverty fuels the demand for cheap labor, pushing families to put their children in hazardous fishing jobs, exposing them to injuries, drowning and exploitation. If you should um, call about 10 fishers or fish processors, ask them, do you know it's, it's, it's against the law for your child who is under 18 to be involved in this kind of uh, business? They will tell you yes. But then you ask them, so why is the child doing this? Then the excuse will come. Oh, maybe the, uh, there's no um, fun to put them in school. They will uh, tell you that maybe I have five kids, three are in school, two are not in school, two are actually helping me. Some would say, um, uh, uh, some are in school actually, but then uh, today they are not, uh, there is no money to actually for them to go to the school today. That's why they join. So it's, it's actually difficult also regulating it. But what does the law say? In 1998, Ghana's parliament passed the Children's Act, Act 560, which outlines the rights of children in Ghana. According to the Act, the minimum age for children to be involved in light work is 13 years and the minimum age for hazardous work is 18. Statistics show that an estimated 1.9 million children engage in child labor in Ghana. 34% of them, aged 5 to 14, work in hazardous conditions, including fishing. Children at 2nd D London Beach are far below the minimum age for hazardous work. Can they escape this fate and reclaim their childhood? Within the social welfare department here uh, and the district, the local assembly here, they're also helping actually. So through the chief fishermen, with such cases, you make them, you make the reports to the police or to, like I said, the social welfare department. So they take it up and then, uh, so the best that fisheries we are also helping is, we are also uh, uh, engaging these, uh, especially the mothers actually, because um, they, they mostly uh, are with the kids. So we are actually educating them on some of the effect, the harmful effect that the kids may, uh, may face. There have been instances that uh, they've been exposed to um, videos, pictures of kids who are, have actually in one way or the other been deformed because they were involved in a strenuous work uh, on, on the sea. Clearly, if the invisible chains of child labor must be broken, it demands a holistic approach from government and all stakeholders. Every child deserves to enjoy their childhood and their right to education. Judith Brown for the assignment. Fisheries Eye is supported by the USAID 
from the American people.